Hello and welcome to Mickey Art. My name is Michelle Edhouse and today I'm going to give this liquefying medium from Atelier another go. Atelier Interactive. Now, um, I gave it a go with the Artist Acrylic and uh, I'm not sure. I actually think it may have been the white that I was using that was not creating the result I desired so I'm going to give it a go again this time I'm going to mix three different ones with it and only use those and see what gets created now some of you uh, know that I've been using the Viridian Hue from Reeves sporadically I got given a tube um, from my father and it was very very old and separated created um, interesting textures let's say that but I really like the color um, so I finally splashed out and bought myself a new pot even though I haven't used the old one up yet because I know I'm not using it as much as I would if I had it I'm going to use my favorite crimson red from Renault Art and I also bought a new medium and this is iridescent medium and uh, apparently you can just use it as a paint or you can mix it with your paints so what I thought I'd do is I would mix them up and I would do a pour with th the three of them as and see what shows up what magic gets created um, but I'm going to use the liquefying medium <coughs> instead of the flow troll, which is what I normally use. So let's give it a go. Let's give it a real test um, with paints that I know I love and I haven't used before. And let's see what shows up. So normally when I'm mixing paints, I put... Oops, this one always has a cap on it. Um, I put a splotch of paint in. And I usually go about 50%, sorry, one part flow troll to two parts paint. So I'm going to do a similar ratio with this. Um... and see how that goes and then I will uh, haven't used a serotonin medium before I put some on my hand can you see where it is and where it isn't it's quite cool um, let's see if that's shot yeah see how it's shining on one side and not on the other that's where the medium is so we'll see how that comes out and then this viridian hue really is quite a lovely green now green and red mixed together what does that make it makes brown so let's see hopefully it won't make too much brown and i'm not going to make you watch me mix this As you saw if you watched that very fast version as I've mixed them all up to the same oh no that's not um this green it's I don't although it comes out smoother out of the tube than my old one it still does this really lumpy bumpy kind of weird thing 
I'm not sure about this. I love the colour, but I just cannot seem to get a smooth, smooth result. Look at that. It's kind of like a... And when you rub it out like that, it's good. Can I, can I see if I zoom you in? Can you see those lumps in there? Whereas if I do the same thing with the pink, it's just completely smooth. That's really weird. It's a brand new tube. I mean, they smooth out eventually. <clears throat> That's really hard to mix. But Hmm. Oh, I'm going to give it a go. The one thing I did notice about this Artela. About this Artela is it stinks. It's gross. Um, I don't think I would want to be using it, to be honest. Um, yeah. Floetrol doesn't smell. This is my Floetrol. Floetrol doesn't smell. So I'm not sure if I didn't get a diff much different result. Let's have a look. What do they do? They almost make a purple, actually, rather than a brown. Oh, I quite like that. Mm -mm -mm. I'm excited. Right, let's see. What am I going to do? <clears throat> well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this um, maybe I'm not going to take it. That's not looking particularly nice. I'm going to find something else to pour on the back in a moment. Okay, so I've grabbed one of my pre-prepared records. And when I say pre-prepared, what I mean by that is I have, um, sprayed, spray-on varnish onto this side to seal the um the record so i need to make sure that i put the tape on the correct side otherwise i will <laughs> seal it incorrectly pour it incorrectly so i always put tape on the ends on that little hole that way if Whoever purchases it doesn't want to make it into a clock. They can have it so that it's not got a hole in it. Now, what am I looking at with this? Um, <clears throat> what I have been... What I, what I saw... I pour on a record that um, Anne-Marie Ritterhoff did a while ago and it was stunning. Um, but it kind of... Um, so what actually reminds me now is I am not set up for this at all. I am so unprepared. I got so excited about this iridescent medium that um, I have... I'll be right back. Okay. So what I've got here is I've got my kitty top um, pottery wheel, electric pottery wheel. Um, on there I have some black tape, which is what my husband uses for taping the polythene that he puts under concrete floors and that's been rolled into a cylinder and stuck down so it's sticky on both sides now I've got these these are the little wooden things that come with canvases to make them ah, 
no, wrong way around. <laughs> um, they they come to help you stretch the canvas. I still haven't worked out how to do that, so one day I'll learn. Um, so that's a bit of a packer. I've got two of those. And then I've got these um, bits of wood that are nice. size for presenting to just so what that does is it, the packer lifts these up off the edge so they don't drag and um, then I'm going to put the record on top of those ta-da now I've got a dot in the center there, so I'm going to line that up, press down firmly so that the tape gets a nice hold on that. Now, what I have in mind is, where's my button? There. I'm going to pour my cup with enough paint to cover this whole thing then I'm going to turn it on and just pour sideways quite quickly like <laughs> but with it spinning it will create hopefully a pretty swirl so, uh, I haven't got any silicon in any of those, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do um, what Rick Cheadley does, Cheadle, 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 um, and he sprays into his cup. So I'm going to give that a go, I've never actually sprayed directly in the cup. And also I've been told that if you spray into your cup, the paint all comes out easier too. So let's see what, what happen, happens there. Blah. All right. So let's start with the Viridian. Then go with the Iridescent. And then go with the crimson and then start that whole process again. Now what I'm kind of hoping is that the iridescent sort of comes out looking a bit like white. That's my target. Whoop! Someone's about to throw it on the floor. Good catch, Michelle. As you can see, I've, I've also, in the meantime, put my walls up. <laughs> um, when you're doing any form of spinning, I highly recommend you put walls up. Why? Because <laughs> check out the size of, sides of my walls. They catch a lot of paint. <laughs> and that's paint that would have been going all over me, all over the floor, all over the walls, all over my other paintings that were, um, that are drying nicely behind me. I'm not excited about this Viridian, but hey, that's okay. It's an experiment. The other cool thing about experimenting like this with old records that you get given for free, it's only really the cost of your time and the cost of the paints and uh, 
would you rather experiment on a free painting surface or on a $30 canvas? I know what I'd prefer. Right, that is all of that one. This is going to be quite crimson, I think. And I'm hoping this whole putting the silicon in beforehand is going to work. Now, what's my awareness? Do I need to put a backing on it? Yes, no. Have I got enough paint? <clears throat> I've got some Mars Black made up here and um, it's going to be my backup. If it doesn't look like I've got enough paint, then I'm going to top up some of the missing spots with that. Ooh. Got a bit of a wobble on. All right, so here's my um, let's give it a go. speed again this is enough paint on there I reckon Like I've been hennaed. <laughs> now, I'm going to get you down and I'm going to show you what that lumpy green stuff has done. It's actually quite a cool effect, but you need to be aware of what it will do if it's going to do it. But I like the shape. I'm really liking the shape. All right. So... <clears throat> You see down here, it's kind of like it's got lumps that have drawn lines. It's quite cool. I quite like it. But if you weren't expecting it and you wanted a smooth finish, you wouldn't be getting it. You see the iridescence in there? That's cool. I'm super looking forward to this one drying and seeing what shows up. Very cool. Right, this looks like some air bubbles and some big lumps that I don't definitely don't want in there. So I'm going to pop you back up and let's get rid of them. First of all, let's just find out whether it's a lump. Like that one. 
you can mostly tell which one's going to be a lump and which one's going to be an air bubble by their shape. Um, air bubbles tend to be perfectly round and lumps tend to have little wonkinesses to them. So now that I've got those big ones out of the way, let's let the torch give us more clarity as to what's lumps and what's air. That's cool. Now I'm going to turn it around this way. To me it looks like a water dragon coming up out of the water with the setting sun behind it. Um, that's what I'm seeing. What are you seeing? Um, it's so pretty. I like it. I like it. And I really like the deep purple that gets created with these two colors together. So what's required to make this viridian hue not have lumps? All right. So if you're seeing the lumps now, they're definitely gonna be there when it dries. big big bits out um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this under a box and leave it to dry the longest way it knows how I said I got the big bits out but I just spotted a couple more ah! um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to leave it to dry for as long as it can like keep it from drying very quickly because let me just zoom you in on where I've been wiping all right so down here we have all the little bits that I've been wiping um, and when I wipe, wipe my finger over them, they're not, some of them are hard enough to be lumps, but most of them just smear out into green smears, because as we know, it's just the viridian hue. So I'm hoping that these smaller ones will just sort of dissolve and uh, cruise out. So... <clears throat> How does it get any better? What else is possible? Um, <coughs> so I'm going to put that one to dry. Before I do, I'm, oh, while I do, um, I'm going to do another test just on my piece of paper down here. And um, what I'm going to test is the just a little bit of the pink the crimson red and a little bit of each of my two paints all right so there's that that one which is my spring from bunnings and this one is the 
we're not sure what from my friend who's a painter what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit on each of my fingers of the red with the medium now this is a paint that I know does do a little bit of floweriness but it doesn't cause why um, so that's in my spring that I normally use and that's in the one that my friend gave me so let me zoom you in and show you each of them are doing so what my friend oop, too far the one my friend gave me and the Bunnings one you know what I'm not actually seeing much difference I actually think it was the combination of the ink No, I am seeing more breaking up in the in the one my friend gave me. All right, well that's cool. I didn't know which one it was anyway, so I'm gonna stick to my spring from Bunnings, and I'll be back really soon um, in the next few days <laughs> with the end of this video, so that you can see how. Oh, let's get you off how our amazing amazing painting dries I'm pretty sure this is going to need to be resined so that those lumps and bumps get hidden but wow isn't she beautiful okay so I was intrigued and so this is just after I poured and I went back and I thought oh, I'm going to try mixing with Floetrol and when I mixed it with Floetrol it's come out absolutely fine there's no lumps there's it's a glistening all one color looks beautiful so i'm like okay cool what's right about this what's going on so i've mixed it with the artilla and look it's done it again it's done the same thing as what it did with the painting so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this one aside um and when i give you the final into the video with what the painting looks like dried I will update you as to whether this just needs to stand for a couple of days and it'll come right or whether it is going to be lumpy bumpy for its life if you use the Atelier, At Atelier, Atelier, Atelier Interactive Liquefying Medium so I'll be right back really soon your time Wowza, I absolutely love, 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 love this. It's so cool. Um, the way the iridescence has just sparkled up all over the place. I really like the idea of using the iridescence as a paint of its own. It just creates such amazing, cool stuff. Remember there was no white in this at all. It was just the iridescence, the red and the green. So that just is stunning. And you know, all those big thick dots that, um, that were in there, they've dried, they're there, they still exist. And I really like them actually. They give it quite a cool texture. I'm actually tossing up whether or not I will resin this one or whether I will leave it as um, a textured painting I really quite like it it gives the dragon or what I'm considering the the sea dragon um, I'm calling this sea dragon with um, in the sunset because that's to me what it looks like um, and I just really love it it gives it gives them uh, some texture some scales some Oh, just, I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it, I love it a lot. So, let's get the feedback on the paints. 
So here is the um, the Viridian that I mixed with the um, Atala thing and as you can see it has finally dissolved in it's lost all its lumps it's actually quite usable um, and please know this is like five days on um, and I've stirred it two or three times in that time so um, the the flow trial one it was fine it was perfect I've used it I've finished the tube I bought new tubes um, loving this color uh, but just know if you do have a problem with the lumps coming up initially just leave it for a few days stir it a couple of times and uh, they should dissolve that's if it is a new tube uh, never quite completely dissolved with my old tube so what else is possible um, yeah don't give up <laughs> So one more shot of our sea dragon in the sunset. So cool. I love it. Really love that iridescence and what it's done to it. Um, it just glints. It's just shiny. It's pretty. It's cool. And I've done some more videos that are drying that you'll see soon. Um, of these using the um, iridescent mixed into the paints so they're coming up and uh, it's so much fun <laughs> thanks heaps for joining me guys how much fun can you have in your life and hey as one of the uh, guys that my kids watch on YouTube says if you're not smiling you're not doing it right my point of view is if you're not having fun, you're not doing it right. What if all of life, what if the purpose of life was to have fun? If it's not fun, why are you doing it? That's my question to you for today. And uh, if it's something you have to do, how can you make it fun? If it's something you don't have to do and you don't want it and it's not fun, either how can you make it fun or choose something else? Alright guys, I adore you. If you haven't subscribed already and want to watch more of my videos, please subscribe and I'll see you in another video. Cheers, bye!